Hi everyone, um, welcome to today's um, Hipwise webinar looking at Brewdog and beer trolling. Um, thank you ever so much for, for joining us. Um, we're going to take a look at some pre and post campaign analysis um, of, um, of Brewdog and um, hopefully should be a good session. So just before we, we begin, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Emma Mormon. I'm the Senior Product Manager at Hipwise and I'm also joined by Charlotte Plasto, who is the Customer Success Manager over here at Hipwise supporting a number of our, our accounts in the UK market. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Hipwise, before we, we drop into some of the insights I want to share with you today, I um, just wanted to tell you a little bit about Hipwise, um, who we are, um, to help make sense of some of the data we're going to be looking at. So Hipwise has been around for um, well over 20 years and we operate in a number of markets, um, predominantly the US, the UK and Australia, um, also France and Germany um, and moving into other markets um, in 2019. And our business is about um, online measurement, um, audience targeting, um, and um, we really pride ourselves on the size of our sample that we have in market tracking online behavior. Um, and that allows us to have a really rich data depth um, looking at the websites and search behavior um, of, of the UK population in this case. Uh, and we partner with a number of um, big partners such as Experian and Kantar Media TGI to allow us to look at those kind of audience insights and really understand the who behind the behavior. So, um, what we'll be talking about today, um, we're going to be looking um, at kind of a, an overview of the craft beer market uh, within the UK. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at the Brewdog audience, who exactly are the Brewdog audience, what's interesting about them. And then finally, um, to have a look at this campaign review um, that, was, that was run back in August and what impact did that have um, on their audience and, and what were any kind of halo effects of that into the drinks industry um, overall. So first up, the, the rise of the craft beer market. So, um, you know, I think everybody is probably aware of the explosion we've had um, within the UK around craft beer. Um, it's been um, kind of well formed in the US for a number of years, but we've really seen this uptick within the UK market over the last few years. And it's really lifted um, sales in, in, within the drinks industry. And I think in 2017, um, you know, it was close to 2% um, rise in sales um, specifically around, around the craft beer. Uh, we have more and more brands that are popping up. We're seeing some of the supermarkets developing their own brands as well. And it's um, it's fair to say that the craft beer market is um, is a fairly competitive space now um, where your kind of your brand standing out, the way that you resonate within the kind of the craft beer enthusiasts and, and also into mass market um, has never been more important. Um, we can see the likes of Tesco's, um, you know, where they're clearing the space now to create this space for the craft beer market. They're running more promotions like the three for five pounds on kind of mix and match, match bottles. And I think it really reflects the intentions of the retailers, you know, to give this kind of marketing push behind it um, as well. So that's the kind of the set of the scene. So let's take a look at the data that we're seeing, um, the, that online trends that we're seeing um, going on um, this year in the UK. So I think the first one to look at is really the increase year on year of that craft audience. So when we look at those people that have been engaging with craft beer, um, searching for craft beer um, in 2017 versus 2018, same period, just um, about those four weeks, we can see that we've we've got around a 31% year on year increase. Now this is unique people that we're looking at, this isn't total visits. So these are individuals um, that, that we're seeing um, online and a really nice growth um, over that period. If we zoom out and we look at the craft beer sellers over the last six months, um, and in this example, looking at the likes of Beer Hawk, um, Beer 52 and, and Honest Brew, we can see over those last six months a real increase in traffic um, being driven through to those kind of craft beer sellers who, who are building real kind of communities around what they do as well. So some significant changes. What's interesting is if we flip that into um, another kind of drinks area that's big in the UK, the, the wine market, um, which we know is, is strong in the UK, um, and we look at um, the traffic year on year and we look as we are here now in the last six months, we can see that while the, the kind of the wine market has um, higher volumes, um, it's much steadier. We don't see these, these kind of great rises that we've been seeing um, in unique users and, and total visits um, year on year. So it's, it's interesting just to see that for where craft beer sits within that kind of overall um, drink space. And then looking a little bit further is what are people searching for? So what you're looking at here is 
um, different kind of variations around craft beer and what are those top variations of search terms that people are looking for. Um, it's interesting to see that craft beer glasses, so being able to you know, have your own special glass at home, uh, resonates a number of times within this report and is really high up. So probably in tonight, some of the things we're going to be talking to later around the audience, around the fact that the craft beer tends to be something people are enjoying at home um, um, as well as out, but tends to be something people are really thinking about um, how they enjoy at home. Um, one of the other big call outs here is that within this top ranking search variation report around craft beer is that Hatherwood, um, which is a new craft beer launched by Lidl this year, um, resonates three times within this list. And it just goes to show the kind of, um, you know, the success that they're having and other mainstream retailers could create within this space um, as we, as you know, they, they pick up um, their intentions around here. The other really nice trend that's picked up is that the fourth top most search piece around craft beer is craft beer advent calendars. And uh, if we take a look at um, searches around advent calendars, as we've seen in the last four weeks um, within the UK market, you can see here that um, beer advent calendars is number 14 within this list. Now, back in 2017, uh, we didn't see this within the top 30. So it's interesting that this early on we're seeing beer advent calendars um, up so high and even Brewdog's advent calendar ranking just into that top 200 as well. The other um, kind of important call out here um, that I noticed in the data was around this kind of success rate. So what we mean by success rate is not only are we just looking at the volume of people who are who are searching and ranking that, but actually who's actually clicking onto a website as a result of that search. And that beer advent calendar has um, close to an 87% um, success rate. So that just goes to show a lot of the intention that's behind um, that search behavior. And, you know, even comparing to the likes of the, um, the gin advent calendars and the Harry Potter advent calendars really kind of um, outstripping them at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see um, how much further, um, you know, as we get into, you know, really get into November, where these rankings shift and how the beer and the brew dogs and, and the beer hawks of this, uh, this world start to, to rise up. Um, okay, so that's taking a look at the, the craft beer market as a whole, just setting some of the scene. Um, now we're just going to move over to the audience. Perfect. Yeah. So now what we want to do is really look into that BrewDog audience. Who is engaging with BrewDog's brand online? So firstly, what we want to look at is that gender and age breakdown. So what's quite a nice story here is that we can see that there's a fairly equal split between females and males engaging with BrewDog online, um, which is something we don't tend to see with uh, other beer brands, which is stereotypically more towards that male audience. Um, but what we can also see um, when we look at those different age groups is that it's slightly skewing towards that younger age demographic, but there's a kind of equal distribution as we go into those more older groups as well. Then when we move on to um, more of those kind of lifestyle attitudes of the brutal audience, we can actually see that they're over 400% more likely to be searching around um, vegan, which is quite interesting because this is one of um, BrewDog's key kind of um, USPs, let's say. 23 of their beers are registered with the Vegan Society. So this is obviously resonating very well with their audience. And we can see that Veganism in general is saying that the, um, that BrewDog audience is um, very keen on, let's say. And then as we um, look at some other lifestyle statements, we can see that 14% of that BrewDog audience have um, identified that they only drink out less than once a month, which is quite interesting um, when we looked at those previous slides, looking at those glass searches and things like that, we can see that people are much more likely, especially in the BrewDog audience, to want to enjoy beer at home. Um, and that's really backed up by those TGI um, statements that we can see in that uh, table there, um, where we can see that they're far over indexing for most of my drinking is done at home there. And additionally, we can see um, they certainly agree with that statement. It's worth paying extra for good quality beer. So then what we wanted to also do is delve into what other brands is this BrewDog audience engaging with? Um, so the first one to call out there is that um, they're over 300% more likely to use Deliveroo. 
that was actually closely followed by Uber Eats. Um, and then when we compared that to other kind of food delivery services like Just Eat and Hungry Horse, they far under index compared to those kind of um, what we could say were um, higher quality um, deli food delivery services like Deliveroo and Uber Eats. Um, then we can also see that 14% of the Brewdog audience had visited the beer section of Amazon. So kind of focusing in on that retailer section, where is it that the Brewdog audience are sourcing those craft beers from? Is it from supermarkets? Or as we can see here, we've identified that uh, beer page on the Amazon website as well. Also interesting to see that 79% of the audience have visited The Guardian um, within this same time period. Something that we see across all audiences is um, Daily Mail, one of the highly visited sites. Um, but it's quite interesting to see that this Brewdog audience engages quite heavily with that news and media site, Guardian, um, as well. And then the last point to call out here is that the Brewdog audience is 15% more likely than the online population to have travelled solo. Um, so this is quite interesting as it kind of is out of the norm, let's say, um, and kind of fits into that Brewdog ideology, that punk ideology, shall we say, of doing things a little bit differently um, and going about life in your own way, let's say. So what we've tried to look into here is how does that Brewdog audience compare directly to the Budweiser audience and then that um, little own brand of um, Happywood, so that craft beer there. So we've broken this down into different kind of areas. So the first one we've highlighted is brands. So this is great opportunity for kind of partnerships with other brands for these beer sellers. So the top one for brew dogs there is um, the Independent uh, Brewers Association. Very interesting there to see that this is one of the brands that brew dog um, audience associates with most, um, kind of feeding into that story that we can see that they want to enjoy their own beer, create their own beer as well. And then when we compare that to Budweiser, we can see that their audience is much more likely to be visiting the Love Box Festival um, compared to Hathaway, the visiting um, publishers like uh, Gardener's World as well. Then we move down into food. So seeing this is a great opportunity for like content pieces. And of course, we always want to match our food to our drink. So understanding what um, your audiences are searching for online, especially in terms of food, is a great opportunity there. So just some key call outs. We can see that Brewdog, uh, that Brewdog audience is searching for like Jamie Oliver, easy recipes, which gives us some really good insight into that audience and what they want compared to the Budweiser audience searching for Subway and then Hathawood um, freezable and vegetarian recipes. So we can see there's some key differences there. And then finally, looking into the attitudes of each audience um, and just seeing where those nuances lay. So for the Brewdog audience, we can see people come to me for advice before buying new things, also feel, feeding into that punk ideology, leading the way, trying new things and wanting to spread the word, uh, which also really feeds into that craft beer uh, market as well. Whereas for Budweiser, we would almost recommend a totally different tact and using celebrities um, to influence their audience purchases. So we can see where those differences lies between those audiences. And then the last bit on audience, uh, we wanted to see how that Brewdog audience fitted in with the larger craft beer audience. So just two key call outs here really. And um, we can see that the craft beer audience in general um, is 39% more likely than the Brewdog audience to search for low to zero alcohol, which is quite interesting. We can see that there's a huge span of interest within that craft beer audience from anything from that niche uh, beers all the way down to things like low or zero alcohol. And then when we look at it for the uh, Brewdog audience, they're actually 15.8% more likely to search for beer advent calendar. So we kind of linking back to what we looked at before, what proportion of that craft beer audience is driving that uh, beer advent calendar searches. And we can see that it's a big proportion of that is coming from that Brewdog audience there. Awesome. Okay, so we've we've kind of had a look at the craft beer, set the scene, we've had a look at the Brewdog audience. 
The final piece we wanted to just talk through was a review of the campaign that Brewdog had run um, uh, back in um, August and if any kind of shift had happened within that audience and also any kind of impact to the kind of the wider drinks market. So um, if I'm sure most of you have seen it, but if you didn't, um, the Brewdog ran a, a pretty fantastic campaign back at the end of August, which um, was um, you know true to their style, was really out there, it, it held no prisoners. Um, and they used the, the site and the community rate beer to take a look at um, where they were kind of um, outperforming their competitors within that community space. Uh, and it was a, a pretty aggressive campaign um, using outdoor media. I'd seen it myself across, um, you know, billboards in King's Cross and out and about and buses. Um, and um, they had also uh, you know, plugged it through their, their kind of their, their blog on their website and, and so on as well. So the campaign run, um, so let's have a look at what kind of impacts we kind of saw at the back of that. The first real call out was that, you know, during this campaign um, period, we saw that um, rape beer moved right up into 10th rank as a site and um, people were visiting before they came through to, to Brewdog. So one, this showed that, um, you know, the, the community were kind of embracing coming from rape beer and they were coming to have a look through to, to Brewdog, but it um, most likely increased some of those um, visits through into rape beer as well off the back of the Brewdog um, campaign. Um, so it's really kind of like that sharing of, um, you know, community and craft beer enthusiasts. Um, you know, just looking at the unique users, we can see where the Brewdog campaign happened. We can see the uptick in the number of people coming through and engaging with the Brewdog um, brands, the website during that period. Um, and when we look at it from a daily visits perspective, we can really see that that uptick um, happening during that period. And I've just called out a, a separate campaign where we, we think it was um, linked to to that date, you know, not having run the campaign ourselves, we wouldn't know, but we can see that second uh, spike um, in September, which might be linked to the kind of the freebie and um, piece they ran for students, which just peaked that little bit higher. Um, but I well imagine that the, you know, the Brewdog campaign that they ran in August was really about kind of um, being disruptive within the drinks market. It was about resonating with the craft beer. It was about showing off the difference in building brands. And, and it's just it goes to show that kind of that level of engagement they got there compared to the, um, you know, the free beers. Um, you know, was almost comparable. It's, you know, really showed the strength of their campaign. Uh, one of the really interesting insights we started to um, take a look at was, okay, well, we can see the visits are increasing. It's kind of the things you would expect and you'd certainly hope from the campaign perspective, but what kind of impact um, would it have had on other areas? What kind of halo effect could we, could we see? So one of the things we looked at was um, Brewdog visitors going to alcohol sections of um, the leading UK supermarkets. So um, this is um, looking at the likes of, um, you know, Tesco's and Sainsbury's, Asda, Morrison's, all the big ones. And what we saw was that during this campaign period that people who had been to the Brewdog website really saw an uplift in their visitation through to those alcohol sections of the supermarket. So we could assume from this that um, Brewdog had directly um, lifted um, traffic and, and sales through into those retailers um, as well. And what impact did it have on the craft beer sellers? Well, we could see that there was, um, you know, an uptick for Beer 52 and Beer Hawk as well. We could see an increase in, in um, traffic during that period. Um, um, which um, wasn't the case with Honest Bruce. We could intonate here that that was off the back of the campaign. Um, but we can really see, um, you know, some of those other kind of increases in um, traffic to those sites towards the kind of the latter part of October, which we believe are really linked to kind of the, the Beer Hawk kind of 48 uh, campaign. They ran 48 beers, 48 pounds, and also um, a, a campaign that um, Beer 52 had also um, run themselves as well. So. We can kind of see that there's been like impact out into the supermarkets. We can see some impact out into the craft beer sellers um, as well. So not as much as their direct campaigns in this case, but we can see those uplifts happening. And um, the other interesting um, piece we wanted to have a look at was, you know, Brewdog had gone out against some of the big major breweries and they they put themselves up against Budweiser's and Foster's, etc. So what we were interested in understanding was, well, post campaign, had this had any effect effect on um, people who've been searching and engaging with lager? So, you know, looking at, you know, lager offers and, and so on. And um, what we could see was that um, 
One is during the Brewdog campaign, we can see this uptick um, in, in traffic. We can see around the lager searches as well. So there was um, could be some contribution there. But interestingly, what happened post campaign is that lager searches were then 70% more likely to be searching for or visiting Brewdog. Um, we could, um, as an interesting piece of analysis, we could take this a step further and figure out whether that kind of retained itself after the campaign or whether it was fairly short lived. But it's interesting to see that there have been some um, dual engagement um, out the back of this campaign as well. Perfect. So once again, what we want to do here is kind of look at that audience and how it might have changed over that campaign period for Brewdog. So once again, zooming in on that gender and age split of the Brewdog audience, we can see post campaign, we saw the biggest uplift um, between those age groups of 35 to 54. Um, same thing again, split fairly equally between the female and male. But yeah, just that kind of middle group there growing the most um, post this campaign. And then what we further wanted to look into is how did that impact the Brewdog community page? Um, so we can see that post campaign total visits to the page from the craft beer audience um, grew by 59%, which is quite a big um, chunk of growth there for that page. Um, and then also what grew was the average time spent um, per visit. So we, so we can see that that increased by 7%. So that means that people were spending a lot more time browsing on the site, looking at more um, posts, etc. So just generally engaging more post the campaign there as well. What we also wanted to do was slightly change the audience that we're looking at here and um, take the audience that identifies with the statement, it's worth paying extra for good quality beer and just see what kind of sites um, they were visiting pre and post campaign. So we can see there that this um, audience visiting Brewdog post campaign grew by 29%. So a huge growth for Brewdog there um, in attracting that good quality beer audience. Um, and then we can see that it obviously made a big impact upon those other kind of mainstream beer sellers, all dropping um, percentages for that pre and post campaign there as well. So lastly, um, going back to that Brewdog audience um, and comparing that pre and post campaign, we wanted to see um, how that audience had changed again and then link back to some TGI variables. So the first one there, a real man can down several points, um, it goes into saying in one sitting. Um, and why we wanted to highlight this one was because um, there may have been a danger for Brewdog within this campaign um, by identifying those uh, mainstream uh, competitors? Could they be bringing on an audience that didn't currently fit theirs? But we can see that although that has increased, it's actually those people that do identify with that statement, they are more um, aligned to the brood of um, ideology and drinking from home, etc. What we've also identified here is what hobbies it is that um, identify with that brew dog audience. So we can see things like um, regularly plays football and rugby, and we can see cricket coming through there. So this is additionally good for things like sponsorship opportunities for brew dog, just understanding who that new audience is and who's engaging with them more post that campaign period. So we've taken a look at this um, in three different ways. We're looking at the craft beer market. So our, our kind of key takeaway here is um, thinking about ways to stay on top of the market and how you could use um, behavioural trends to think about um, contributing to growth. Um, we've had a look at those audience insights. So really the takeaway there for, for you guys or for any brand is just thinking about how you could use an understanding of your competitor's audience to um, drive acquisition strategies and, and gain audience share. And, and I think equally think about um, what your shared audience looks like um, and how you kind of you go after that exclusive audience away from your competitor. And then finally, um, just like how those brands can leverage those shifts in audience and, and post campaign to grow consumer engagement. So just those very last insights that Charlotte was looking at and I, you know, where we started to pick up, or sorry, Brewdog had started to pick up a very new kind of sports demographic 
um, around people participating in the rugby um, and, and the cricket is interesting to see, okay, well now how could I engage with that audience? How could I bring them further into kind of my ideology and that that brand um, brand spirit? Um, so hopefully, um, you know, that was a really nice short and sweet um, um, insights for you to take away some food for thought. Um, I know we've got a couple of questions that have come through and we've got a couple of minutes that we can um, use to use to answer them. Um, so if you bear with us. Um, so I think the OK, the first one we've got is um, how is it that you can see what is happening on the the beer section of the Amazon site. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're not magic. Um, we, um, as I said at the very beginning, because of the way that we um, gather data um, through our sample, we're able to um, look um, the behavior of people through the URL, so through different pages, um, whether that's right through to conversion on basket pages and, and so on. So everything we do is through the URL. It allows us to break things down and to, to look at those kind of click streams of behavior as well as very specific. So um, one of the things we do is we, we do kind of deep dives into Amazon and we can look at um, you know traffic, we can look at behaviors, we can also look at the audience moving through to there as well. Um, so that's that's how we do that. Um, so another question here is, uh, visits are nice, but can I look into the engagement of a site? So we briefly actually um, touched on this with one of our metrics, but yes, we can look at that engagement of a site. We can look at how many um, pages were viewed um, within a site, how much time. So that's something that we referred to a couple of slides back. Um, so yeah and we can really kind of change the way that we look at it so although we can see total visits and unique users we can start looking to how are people interacting with those kind of time um spent and pages yeah um someone is um asking actually two people have asked about this um around um how this kind of correlates with homebrew audience and people who want to create their own beer um, the answer is, I don't know off the top of my head, <laughs> um, but um, it's certainly something that Hitwise would be able to answer and we would we would look at, um, you know, the, the behaviours of people who've been searching around homebrew, who've been visiting those type of websites and creating an audience out there. And exactly the same way as we've walked you through, um, you know, how the Brewdog audience has been behaving, we could, we could have a look at that audience and see what impact actually the Brewdog audience um, had had, had on, on that group as well. One thing I could say is um, from some of the analysis um, that we were doing is I did notice on the Amazon site the um, ranking and search for, um, I think Brewdog have their own book around brewing and that was resonating quite highly during that period. But I, I say that a little loosely because it wasn't something that, that kind of made the final cut into here, but certainly something we could look into. And um, um, we do have another question on here. Um, I might leave you to answer this, Emma. So demographics wise, how likely is it that these people have a beard? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great question and I'm sure lots of brew dog lovers have them. Um, it's not a question uh, or any kind of a piece of data that we have in the TGI piece. Um, but for sure, you know, it's an interesting idea around kind of partnership and, you know, whether it's beard grooming or other brands that kind of resonate, but it's certainly the right way of thinking about really getting underneath who is the audience and how can I best interact with them, engage with them and, and share the same brand value. So a funny question, but it's probably, you know, pretty bang on actually as well. Um, Okay, I think um, we're, we're at half past now. So a big thank you for joining us today and a big thank you for your questions. Um, I know that this um, webinar is gonna become available for kind of download. You can have a look at it um, again afterwards. If you've got any more questions, please do um, reach out on the email address you can see on the screen now. Um, and um, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.